Hello, and welcome to the Wisest STEM Mentoring Series, Learning from the Women That Inspire Us. This series will be comprised of five segments, taking you through different topics like the challenges of pursuing STEM, schooling experiences, and general STEM career advice, just to list a few. If you pledge to participate, or your teacher pledged to participate, you will have received a corresponding worksheet. If not, send us an email at wisest.outreach at ualberta.ca, and we'll get it to you as soon as we can. Without further ado, we're going to be listening in on advice on having a successful career in STEM. I feel like my support network is very important for me. Mm -hmm. um, and so they're obviously there for like emotional support, which is just, um, has been so helpful. Um, mm -hmm. But also for information, because I do have like a lot of friends who are in other STEM fields or have experience um, working like in research and um, or are doing their masters or whatever and mm -hmm. so it's always really helpful to kind of have those networks and being able to reach out for um you know like help when i need it whether it's just like oh like I, whether it's like for applications or how to get more involved and just things like that mm -hmm. oh, great. yeah yeah um so for me i find having just even a few people who are incredibly encouraging can make a world of difference i have an older sister who's not in STEM at all, but she's an amazing influence and just like very um, positive. And then I have incredible mentors at the U of A um, in engineering. And that's very important to me. It helps me kind of make maybe major life decisions, but I kind of get someone else's input and make yeah. sure I'm on the right path. And it's incredible, yeah. Like it was in science in the same way you were, I had to really reach out to people that I saw within the community or here at the university that were maybe like a couple of years ahead or pursuing their master's or PhD while I was still in my undergrad and just kind of gain their life experience on what it's like to be a, you know, <laughs> the STEM role. Cause I, I didn't have that close knit mentorship. And then, um, yeah, as I got more comfortable with talking to that community and then getting really involved with the, the local science community here at, at U of A, it just made me more comfortable with it and made it a lot easier to understand my journey because others had gone through it. Mm -hmm. Ties back to like time management, like I said previously, like make, setting aside time for things that are important and like learning that it's okay to ask for help when you need it, whether it be, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, whether it be something that's like professionally or even just like a, a personal thing and just um, learning that that's totally okay. <laughs> yeah. Start. Yeah. <laughs> I've got some things to, to talk about with that. Um, I think the most important thing to remember with STEM is that there's not one picture of what a scientist or an engineer looks like. Um, and, and oftentimes that can change and shift, right? There are a lot of, uh, there are a lot more opportunities now in science communication, for example. So if you really love science, but you don't necessarily have, um, want to work in a lab all day, then there are still plenty of opportunities for you there. Um, and you kind of have to, you, I, I have also have a friend, she got her PhD, she was doing breast cancer research, um, but she decided she didn't want to stay in a lab all day. And so she ended up um, also getting uh, doing some policy stuff. And now she's actually working for the US federal government, uh, helping to form the actual government policy around all of these types of research and, and things like that, right? So just because you want to go into STEM doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be like that stereotype wearing goggles and holding a beaker, right? Um, if you want to do that, that's awesome. <laughs> but no offense to you. <laughs> but, um, and I've been there plenty of times and I also think that's cool. But um, and, and for some people, that's really great. And for some people, it's not. So um, I think a lot of that is is kind of determining um, uh, what types of things you are really interested in and get you excited. So for me, um, when I was in graduate school, I found that I really loved to do a lot of outreach uh, type things. So I spent a lot of my time, um, for whatever reason, we had a lot of entomology related outreach. And so... Um, because my, my grad degree was half entomology, which is insects, and half mycology, which is fungi. And so for whatever reason, we had tons of requests through my university's outreach office to talk about insects. And so I spent tons of time working with, um, working with local schools and planning field trips and all different kinds of things. And I found that I was super excited about that. And so I kind of figured out different ways um, after I graduated to, to work in those types of things. So yeah, 
you guys have anything else to add about that? Um, yeah, like I don't think success isn't just one picture. Like success isn't something you can generalize. Success is something that is different for each individual. So maybe one person finds success in doing their PhD or another person finds success just happy that they finished their bachelor's or another person, like she said, can find success in holding a beaker and wearing those glasses, whereas someone else might prefer to, how do I create the method on how we hold the beaker? <laughs> like, so it, it, it's so tailored to dependent on who you are and what your passions are. So as long as you follow your intu intuition and follow your true passion, then you'll find success. Yeah. And, and I didn't know that passion until most of the way through my undergraduate career. So if you don't know what that is yet, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. It's really about exploring different opportunities. And that's kind of how you learn, right? I, I did a couple, um, I had I had this one internship that I figured pretty early in, I was like, you know, this isn't really something that I wanna do long-term, but that's okay because it was still a great learning opportunity, looked great on my resume and I learned from it and decided that I wanted to go in a different direction, so. Yeah. And I think um, like building your network and that's sort of how you figure out all these different opportunities and the different things that you could do. Um, so for me, when I was doing my master's, I was working with people who were doing research as engineers. And I thought, I absolutely want to do that, but I don't want to be a professor. So if I hadn't met them, I may not be doing my PhD right now and I'd be in a totally different career path. Um, but like you said, there's no one successful career. So a lot of engineering is maybe bridges and cars. That's what people think of, but that's not necessarily true. You want to work for Tesla, that's awesome, but you can also, you know, make sure every country has access to clean drinking water. So there's so many different things that you can do with all science or engineering degrees. It's not a cookie cutter. This is what you're going to do. You're going to build a bridge. Um, I would hate doing that. So there's just so many things that you can do with these uh, degrees and you can really turn it into whatever career that you want it to be. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a really big thing. And, and especially if you come here to the University of Alberta, again, there's so many different resources available to you. We're sitting in the Career Center right now. Um, and that is something that is is huge. They have so many different types of career counselors and other people available to you to help you kind of try to tease out um, what kind of skills you might need, what you might be interested in, and, and those types of things as well. So yeah, definitely. I get it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, I think for me, networking outside of my specific training domain was really helpful because it allowed me to make friends and connections that uh, sometimes they bring a different perspective. Like being a biologist, having friends who are engineers, sometimes they look at things a slightly different way and be like, hey, did you think of it that way? Um, and even now entering my career, a lot of those have ended up in really neat connections and support groups that... Um, been beneficial. I feel the faculties kind of preach within themselves that when you come to university, like your friends all need to be faculty of bio -sci or they all need to be engineers, but go explore. <laughs> and I will just say as a small plug for Wisest that we do have an undergraduate club, UAY is on the campus. That's a really great way to meet a bunch of interdisciplinary STEM students. And we also have a, a network for graduate students and professionals that's called Wiser. And so Again, another great way to network and to meet people and all that fun stuff. Just had to get that plug out there. <laughs> awesome. Um, so models. Like, I, gosh, I've like, always been into, like, theater and arts. Mm -hmm. And, like, when I was growing up, I watched, like, Glee. Yeah. And I was obsessed with, like, Rachel because like, she was so motivated. But anyways, um, <laughs> it did not motivate me to go into STEM per se, but it motivated me to follow my passions and <laughs> live life at strong. So, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes awesome. that's all you need. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, on just some journey yeah. too yeah. while you're at it, right? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. So what some of my role models growing up, just trying to think back to this now. Um, I used to really love track and field. So like Donovan Bailey back in the day, I just thought he was everything. And then he just was like Athletes, they just like athletes had so much drive, and I just was always thought that was like just a, such an amazing thing. So I think I took some of my athletic drive and that background of wanting to like be personally better, and I just applied that when I got to school. Um, I don't really think of anyone else. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. It's a tough question. For yeah, it's a tough question. <laughs> um, yeah, kind of similar. Like I did competitive dance when I was younger, so I loved Karen Kane and how she was so passionate about what she wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So I applied that to my science training, just that passion. I also really love the show called Popular Mechanics for Kids. Oh, and they had these two teenagers on there that would always do science experiments. And that seemed <laughs> so fun. And I was like, I wanna do that for a living. Like they need to blow stuff up. So that may have had a bit of influence as well. <laughs> um, I think, I don't know. 
Oh, I with my dad, I think. Okay. Because we are four sisters. Mm-hmm. So he didn't got the boy. So he was like, come here and help me change the tire or whatever mm-hmm. stuff to the car and fix mm-hmm. the stuff around the house. And I was like, okay, this is cool. <laughs> and then my other sister went into engineering, actually. And I, I just saw her and I was like, okay, she seems happy. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can do this. Okay. And yeah, I think that. I think that's great. Yeah, similar. Um, so I have two older brothers and it was... I wanted to do everything they could do. Like there was no no way I was going to do anything different just because girl. And so, yeah, I helped my dad build stuff on the farm. And like, I was always very involved. And then um, Dr. Margaret Ann Armour is like my yes. all-time yes. role model. Like I just will fangirl in front of her. Can't speak. <laughs> it's very embarrassing. <laughs> but, uh, she did. I went to, it's the set conference. Mm-hmm. And she had done a, she was doing a, a chemistry experiment in an auditorium and even though I wasn't really interested in chemistry, she was just so inspirational. I was just like, oh, I will follow you anywhere. <laughs> so, yeah. She yeah. has that effect on people. Yeah, she, she does. does. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So Dr. Armour is, she's the founding chair of Wisest, and she is the vice dean of diversity in the faculty of science here at the University of Alberta. She's a chemist. She's in the order of Canada. She's an awesome, amazing, inspiring woman. So, yeah. Our now so in university in your career what would you say um kind of that a typical day in life is like for you start at this end my days are not typical <laughs> I'm just <laughs> trying to laugh at that so um a big part of my job right now as i said i work for an engineering company who has been branching out to do in-house chemical analysis so um i'm helping them build a lab and <laughs> it's been really interesting so every day is very different very dynamic um, today I was had a big a lot of meetings about buying a gas chromatography unit and like the installation and stuff of like that. So um, I deal a lot with um, training new chem techs from like Nate that we're starting to take on as we build a whole new arm <laughs> of our of our company. So um, yeah, I was like the first chemist that they've hired, um, and then uh, along with um, their second was a chemical engineer. So. Uh, yeah, my days are very unique. I don't really know how else to describe it. Like, no two days is the same. <laughs> I kind of like that. Yeah. It's not, right? it's not boring. Yeah, when, you're, when you're building a lab, it's like anything gets really thrown your way. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Um, I, like, last year of school, I just finished this past April, has been possibly my most, like, my best year, like, the most enjoyable year I've had. Um, so I had decided to extend my degree an extra year. Um, and then with that, I was able to take uh, four classes and three classes a semester. So I was able to uh, be an intern with the sustainability group on campus. So I would uh, do my classes in the morning and I would uh, work at my internship in the afternoons. And it was so much fun, like getting to do uh, more of like the technical science stuff and classes in the morning and then getting to take a step back and uh, do some event planning type work, outreach, um, as well as uh, like report writing from a non-science perspective. So uh, it was honestly my favorite like time in school. So yeah, <laughs> awesome. that's great. So right now I'm working for City of Edmonton and I've only been with them for six months. So I came from industry, which means I was working in the consulting field, which I was I was designing buildings. So then it was calculations. It's also taking calls from contractors, people who are on site, need instructions, things go wrong. You have to, it's very, yeah, by the seat of your pants, like figure it out and just roll (laughs) with it it and do the best you can. And now it's, I can be in a meeting to get a call because someone has run into a building or (laughs) they're like, please come out and look at this. And okay. So it's incredibly varied, which yeah, I love it. It's very, very diverse. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you learned something new. If you have any questions you'd like answered, send them over to us at wisest.outreach at ualberta.ca. We'll try to answer them in our Q&A segment on Friday, May 15th 